let me, just let me give my own personal welcome to you this evening. I really appreciate you taking the time to come along to hear the message of the gospel this evening. I would, uh, I'm, I'm looking uh, this afternoon to look at the subject of time, with the clocks going back in the early hours of this morning, and I was preparing for this meeting looking ahead. I decided to do a bit of a study on time throughout the Bible, looking specifically at the gospel message, uh, just in relation to God in relation to time, God's message to us for our time that we have on this earth, the time-bound nature of this message and how we need to respond to that message within a given time period, and then also touching a bit on our own mortality and how the Christian can view time and can relate to time. So I want to, first of all, look at God in relation to time, and I want to open God's word, the Bible, and turn to, first of all, Second Peter, Second Peter, and we're going to look at chapter three. Second Peter, chapter three. It's quite a quite a short verse. I will be referring to a number of passages this afternoon. I don't uh, expect you to turn to them all. And um, they will be short passages, and they will be clear and hopefully easy to to understand. So, Second Peter. Chapter 3, verse number 8. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. And we could have read a similar passage in, in Psalms. For a thousand years in thy sight are as but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. That's Psalm number 90. So what are these passages telling us this afternoon? in relation to God. So God in relation to time, that's, that's the topic I want to focus on at the start of the message. Well, well, these passages are telling us that to God, one day is like a thousand years. And it's just a picture. It's to help us try and comprehend eternity, eternal matters. It's very difficult for us to understand uh, this, con this concept that God is eternal and he's outside of time. He's not bound by time. It's quite a difficult concept for us to understand. We are programmed by time. I've got to uh, roughly half an hour to present the message to you. There's a clock on the wall. There's a watch here. I knew the date that I had to preach the gospel here. We're characterized by time. We have plans for our life, whether that be education or a career or a family, whatever those plans are. Our lives are often marked by time and affected by time. God is separate from all of that. God is not affected by time. He is the alpha and omega we could read in the Bible, the beginning and the end. And I suppose at the start of the message this afternoon, I just want to stress that the message that we preach is not something that we've dreamed up here at the Gospel Hall. It's not something that I've made up myself. The message that we preach comes from the Bible. It comes from God itself. And I suppose there's a bit of a challenge at the start of the meeting. How do we evaluate God? How do we appreciate God? Do we reverence how great God is? This ever-existing one, this one that spans eternity that spans the universe do we truly appreciate just at the start of the meeting how great he is do we ever think about how the universe was actually created do we consider time itself do we think about time on a, on a on a common basis do we think about what's going to happen after this life is over this afternoon i just want to to focus in on his message to us, this ever-existing one, and I, and I challenge you at the start of the meeting, do you reverence him? Do you appreciate him? In our society today, in the main, people reject God. They don't want to listen to God. They want to go on their own way at the start uh, of our meeting this afternoon. I just want you to understand how great God is. When did time start? We could go back to the start of our Bible, to Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We could read about the creation of the sun, the stars, the moon. And again, it's just a challenge to you. Society in the main would reject these teachings. Do you believe that God created the earth? It's fundamental uh, to understanding God, his nature. This is what the Bible teaches us. It's for, for us to, to listen to and to understand and to appreciate and to trust and to believe. I believe that every person has a God-shaped void and thinks about spiritual things and, and, and matters concerning this. In the quiet times, maybe not, they don't discuss it openly with their friends or in society. It's generally not uh, the, the done thing these days. But I do think that every single person 
consciously thinks about these things and considers them. And tonight, I just want to challenge you at the start of the meeting. Do you understand that there is a God, a great God, and that he's got a message for you? And, that, and that's where I want to go next. Uh, so what is God's message to us in the time that we have on this earth? Can you turn with me probably to one of the best known uh, verses in the Bible, John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And we're going to read from uh, verse 16. I'm sure many of you could recite this off by heart. You probably learned it in Sunday school. Very well known verse. What's God's message to us while we're on earth? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's just read this again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What's God's message to us? It's contained in that one verse. That is the message of the gospel this afternoon. For God, again, this great, this majestic one, for God so loved the world. It's, it's amazing to think about it. Often when I'm preaching the gospel, I, I will uh, consider these things. The love that God had for us. If we trace through history, we can see how generation after generation would turn away from God. They would do the complete opposite of what God would command them to do. Even if we look at our own society, even if we're uh, honest with ourselves and look in our own lives, quite often we do uh, the opposite of what God would, would look for us to do. But how did God respond to that? For God so loved the world. The world, that, that, that also includes you uh, this afternoon. The world's a very big place. You're in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Who did he give? Was it a, a great angel or a, a great servant? He gave the best. He gave his only begotten son. The Lord Jesus, the Son of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever. And I want you to understand uh, that, that this this afternoon. Whosoever means you. Whosoever means you. Whosoever believes. Believes. This is the central part of the, the gospel message. It's the central part in this verse. Believes. It's not believing in his existence. Uh, that's a, a historical fact. He was really here. And I hope that sinks in and you understand that. It's believing in his finished work at Calvary. And the cross is a central part of the gospel message. Something I cannot miss when I'm preaching this, evening, this afternoon. The cross. The finished work. The Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross to bring about your salvation. He shed his precious blood for you. In those hours of darkness, God punished him for the sins of the world. He bore our sins, we could read in the Bible, in his own body on the tree. So belief, we need to believe that when he died on the cross, he died. Yes, he died for the whole world, but he, believed, he died for me. He died to take away my, my sins. And then we can read at the end of the verse, whoever believes should not perish. Something I, I can't miss as well when I'm preaching the gospel. There's a, there's a, a choice to be made, a decision to be made uh, this afternoon to believe or to not believe. To believe eternal life. To not believe is an eternity where God must punish you for unforgiven sin. God is a holy God. We cannot enter into heaven without having our sins forgiven. We must deal with the issue of our sin. God has provided a way back to him. It's through the Lord Jesus Christ and through his finished work on the cross. I wonder this afternoon, are you willing to place your all on the cross? Not to believe just in his existence, not to believe that he was a great man, not just to follow his teachings, not just to come along to a gospel hall. Are you willing to place your all to trust him for your eternity, to trust him for your eternal salvation? We could read at the end uh, of our verse about eternal life should not perish but have everlasting life a life that is different from this life uh, a life in heaven what can we read about heaven there's no night there there's there's no war there there's there's no pain there there's no anxiety there's nobody to let you down it's a completely different life to what we experience 
down here on earth. But there's a decision to be made. We need to trust the Lord Jesus. We need to trust him to be our only, our saviour. Quite often people will uh, remark on the gospel message and say, well, what gives God the right to punish me? Well, if you look at our own land just now, if we break the law, if I was caught speeding, I might be given a speeding ticket or given some points or if something else serious happened, we'd be potentially go to jail. We'd have to pay the price for breaking the law. Each one of us has broken God's law. And we must pay for it. God can not tolerate sin in heaven and our sin must be forgiven. It's crucial. If that was not the case, there would be no reason for the cross. That the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to take away our sins. So what's God's message to us on this earth? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God stepped into time the Son of God, the Lord Jesus, and he went to a cross to die there for, for our sins, for your sins. There's a time-bound nature to the, the message of the gospel. There's a limited time to accept this message or reject this message, and that's what I want to focus on next. So if you could turn with me to Matthew's gospel now. Matthew's gospel and chapter 6. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6. I'm just going to read from verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil of office. It's really that first phrase in, in verse 33. But seek ye first, seek ye first the kingdom of God. It's really saying prioritize spiritual things. Prioritize eternal things. I don't know what your number one priority is today. Maybe you're uh, thinking about work tomorrow. Maybe you're planning something to do with your career. Maybe you're thinking ahead to Christmas. Maybe you're planning a holiday. I don't know what your number one priority is today. I hope if you're not saved, if you don't know what it is to be a Christian, that that is your number one priority. This is what the verse is telling us. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. I hope that's what you're doing uh, this evening. You know, we're not given tomorrow. We could read in verse 30, 34 about um, not giving thought for tomorrow. Yes, we, we need to make plans, but it's plans in the will of God. We do not know what will happen tomorrow. We're not given tomorrow. And when it comes to the message of the gospel, you're given here and now. You're given the, the present moment to accept this, this message. It's not one to be put off uh, to later this evening or tomorrow or to the next week. Seek ye first, make it your number one priority to get right with God if you've not done so, uh, so far in your life. So when should you accept uh, this message? You now, if I had to pick, pick, paint a bit of a picture, I stay down in the inner leaving quite often. I'm walking on the beach with, with my dog. Um, and sometimes you'll see the, the rescue helicopter come across or the lifeboat come out to, to, to rescue someone. You know, if you were drowning in the fourth, and the lifeboat came to rescue you, I think you would realise you need to be rescued right now. It's not something to be put off. It's the same in relation to this message. If I could demonstrate how serious it is to not have your sins forgiven, an eternity in hell is something I don't, I don't like to, to kind of focus in on when I'm preaching the gospel, but it's the fact of the gospel. It's an urgent message. It's something that you need to listen to and something you need to respond to today. Don't put this message off any longer we could read in second corinthians now is the accepted time behold now is the day of salvation tonight we're throwing you the lifeline we're pointing you to your savior the lord jesus christ it's up to you to grasp it to accept that free gift of salvation you'll not regret it so the time bound nature of the gospel message we're not given any longer we could be taken out of this life or the Lord Jesus Christ could return as well. And the opportunity, that day of grace could, could close. And we could read in Mark's gospel, but of that day and that hour, and that hour knoweth no man. So the message is time bound. We don't know how long we've got. This could be your last gospel message that you hear uh, this evening. This could be your last opportunity that God's giving, giving to you to respond to that message. Or the Lord Jesus may return, which is something as Christians we're looking forward to. 
because our sins are forgiven and we know what lies ahead. I wonder if you are looking forward to, to that occasion as well, or whether you're unsure or whether you're filled maybe with um, anxiety as you think ahead to that event as you, because you don't know where you stand uh, in the light of eternity. I wonder uh, this afternoon, if you're understanding this message, what would stop you coming to the Saviour? And I want to touch on uh, our own mortality, a bit of a, a morbid subject, but it's a theme that flows throughout the Bible and it's something I can't miss uh, when I'm preaching the gospel um, this afternoon. You know, the psalmist could say, Behold, thou hast made my days as a handbread, hand breadth, and mine age is nothing before thee. And he's basically saying, In the light of eternity, our life down here is a very short window of time. You know, I'm, I'm only 30, believe it or not. And it feels like blink twice and, and somehow I'm married, I've got two children and, and a job. And when I speak to people older, older than me, quite often they say it just gets, gets worse, it gets quicker and quicker. And before you know it, life is gone. And I wonder where, where do God and spiritual things uh, rank for you in life just now in your plans? Is it, is it an optional extra to attend on a Sunday to, to read the Bible, to pray, or, or is your whole eternal salvation your whole eternity dependent upon the lord jesus christ again i hope it is um as we, we preach this afternoon and i want to look at uh, a verse in james just on the subject james chapter four james chapter four some of you may know where i'm going it's quite a, a well-known verse james chapter four and we're going to read from verse 13. James chapter 4, reading verse 13. Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. For as you know not what shall be on the morrow. And this is the, the, the part of the verse I want to focus on. For what is your life? There's even a vapour that appeareth for a little time and then vanish away. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. For what is your life? It is a vapour that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. You know, it's a very visual verse. It's very easy for us to understand. Um, a while back, I used to get the train in from Inverkeething and throughout the winter time, I'd be standing there. Sometimes you see your, your breath, it was that cold. Or maybe you can visualise boiling the kettle and the steam goes out the kettle. Just that vapour, it's there for a moment and then it's gone forever. That's a characteristic that this verse is describing our life. It's a very short period, a short window of time. But what we do and decisions that we make in that short period of time will determine where we spend our eternity, that never-ending period of time. I wonder in the light of this, do you acknowledge that God is also in control of your life? Where, I wonder where he features in your plans. Do you reverence him? Do you have a true understanding of how great he is? And are you living your life uh, in, in awareness of this? You know, we need to make that decision point in time. I've stressed it again and again, and I'll stress it uh, one more time. It's, it's a decision that needs to be made in the here and now. I sat where you sit for the best part of 18 years, listening to the gospel message and putting that decision off and off. I didn't know when my last opportunity could be. God, in his mercy, allowed me to hear the gospel many times. I don't know if he'll do the same for you. But as I said, this could be your last opportunity to hear this message and respond. The Bible could say, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. I don't know if you're planning to make this decision at some point in your life, Maybe in the future, maybe when you get old, that's not the case. We do not know how long we've got in this life as a decision that we need to make in the here and now. We need to focus on the, the weightier matters of our, of our life. What is our life's purpose? Why are we here? Where are we going? I wonder if you've thought about these things seriously. You know, as Christians, we can enjoy a different quality of life even down here. And it's something I want to, uh, to stress Happy are the people whose God is our Lord, I think is the verse that's, that's behind me, um, which is quite a fitting for the message that I've got this afternoon. You know, to become a Christian allows you to remove the anxiety you have about the future, 
whatever circumstances you're going through, yes, they can affect you, but you've got a saviour, you've got a shepherd, one who cares for you, one who loves you, one who will never let you down. So time passes very quickly. We've got a limited time to respond to the message that God gives us even today. Before I became a Christian, quite often I would sit where you sit and I would hear a verse, sometimes this time of year, sometimes a wee bit uh, earlier into autumn. It's found in Jeremiah. I'm not going to turn to it. I'll just quote it off the platform. And it says this, the harvest is past, the summer has ended, and we are not saved. And that used to jar. That used to uh, annoy me sometimes when I was sitting listening to this message because I always intended to become a Christian at some point. Sometimes I would start at the beginning of a year and say, at the end of this year, I'm going to become a Christian. But I put the message off and off and off, and before you know it, the year is gone. And as we approach Christmas, maybe it was your intention at the start of the year to become a Christian, and you're still here, you're still unsaved. You've maybe heard the message many times. What's it going to take for you to, to place your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus? What's it going to take for you to make that decision? I'm trying to stress again tonight, do not put this message off any longer. It's a very urgent message. It's one we need to respond to in time. Now I want to look finally at time from a Christian's perspective. How do Christians react and, and uh, react to, to time? And I just want to turn, first of all, to, to Hebrews. Hebrews this time, um, chapter 13. You don't need to turn to it. It's a very short verse. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. It's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. You know, I said uh, throughout our message that God sits outside of time. He's unaffected by time. We can be affected by circumstances that come in uh, to our lives. We can be affected by uh, illnesses as we progress through life. We can let others down. Tonight, we preach one who is the same, who never changes. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. His promises will remain the same. His characteristics will remain the same. The message that we preach to you this afternoon remains the same. You can trust him. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. As we look ahead as Christians, we know what lies ahead of us. We know that the Lord Jesus Christ will come to take us to be with him because we've placed our faith and trust in him. And if we go through events which we do not enjoy because Christians aren't averse to negative things happening in their lives, we have a good shepherd that cares for us, a good shepherd that gave his life for the sheep. So our circumstances may change. He never changes. His teachings and his person remains the same. You know, the psalmist David, he could say, my times are in thy hand. The psalmist David was hounded like a partridge from cave, from cave to cave as Saul would seek to take his life. He was constantly under threat. How did he react? My times are in thy hand. And again, as Christians, we can rest there. He has our times in our hand. Whatever lies ahead, he knows what it is and he cares for us. And we can trust him and rely on him. And I wonder if you're not a Christian, do you realize how much comfort you can get from this? Just resting, just putting our anxieties, our burdens over to him. One who cares for us, one who is, as I said, that good shepherd. We touched on John chapter 3, verse 16. Whosoever believes should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a certainty. It's not maybe will not perish, should not perish. It's the promise of an unchanging God, a God who cannot lie. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died on a cross for your sins, you will not perish and you'll enter into everlasting life. That's the simplicity of the gospel message. There's a surety behind it. You know, as we conclude the, the message this afternoon, I wonder uh, what you're thinking, what's your response going to be to that saviour? The saviour who's died on the cross for you. You know, are you going to be, maybe you're like Thomas just now, you're maybe doubting parts of the message. You know, the Lord would say to Thomas, put your hands in, feel the nail prints. You know, touch my side, be not faithless, but believing. You know, that same saviour, he died for you. He shed his own life's blood for you. I hope this message is coming across to you. I don't know who you look up to in life, people that would sacrifice everything for you. 
and it's, it's, it's usual to show love and respect to those that show love to us. The Lord Jesus died for those who hated him, those who sinned against him. He died for you personally. I trust that you'll believe this and place your all on that. Trust that when he died on the cross, he died for you. And that is all you need to do. Repent from your sin and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for eternal salvation. You know, this afternoon we preach a living saviour. Yes, he did die, but he rose the third day and he's now seated at God's right, at God's right hand and he's able and he's willing to save you. A living saviour. That's what makes the, the message that we preach this afternoon different. A living saviour, one who cares for you, one who stands with his arms open wide to receive you. If only you receive him as your own and personal saviour. So just in, in conclusion, God, God is timeless. He entered into time in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring, back, bring us back to him to create that way of salvation. He loves you. I want that to strike home again this afternoon. The Lord Jesus Christ loves you. Whoever you are, whatever you've done, he loves you and he died to save you. It's a time-bound message. You know, we must respond remembering our own mortality. Remembering that there's a short space of time for us to make that decision. Tonight could be our last opportunity, as we've said already. Or the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ could return to take home, take, take those who have believed in and home uh, to heaven. Prioritise your salvation, getting right with God above everything else. And finally, come to know the Saviour who remains the same. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. Place your all upon him. He will give you help in this life. And he will also take you home to be with him uh, in heaven for all of eternity. Now, trust um, what I've said has been easy to understand. If not, you can speak to me after. I've tried to be as clear as I possibly can. Um, if nothing else, just remember the, the verse of John 3.16, the gospel message in a nutshell. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Place your faith your trust your all on the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we're just going to pray together. Our Father, we would come before thee in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ and we would thank thee for uh, thy son. We thank thee for one who went to Calvary, went to the cross, one who suffered there, one who suffered at the hands of his own creation, one who was judged for the sins of our world. We think of those hours of darkness. We think of his word, words, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We think of one who went further than any man. Think of one who gave his all. We thank thee for one who finished the work. We thank thee for one who rose again. We thank thee for one who is a saviour, one who can save to the uttermost those who believe in him. We think of those who are here this evening, perhaps watching online or uh, those are, are here with uh, here presently, Father, we just pray that we would bless them. We think of uh, the urgency of this message. We think of how a decision made sitting in the seats uh, this afternoon could determine where somebody spends eternity. We think of the solemnness of this. We just pray that it would speak uh, to those that are gathered listening to the message uh, this afternoon. We just pray that any distractions or barriers would be broken down and that somebody this evening would place their all, place their faith and trust in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. For we ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.